down in the junkyard. Yep. Yeah, welcome to the boom boom room. <laughs> we don't know where this stuff be coming from. All right, what's up, y'all? Kicking it with the Junkyard Dog on junkyarddogs.com. So we are in the junkyard once again at U-Pick Parts, and we are about to do a really tight junkyard mod. Another one of those junkyard mods that I absolutely love to do. Um, these are like little nuggets of uh, knowledge that I've picked up over the years, just messing around with cars and stuff. This is a drive shaft episode. So what we're uh, going to be doing is so basically our cars come with well the fox bodies come with steel uh drive shafts which are cool and they do the job but um it's they, they kind of reduce the amount of acceleration that you can have with something called inertia right so uh inertia is when something is rotating um how much the, the heavier that it is uh, the more force has to be exerted to rotate it. It's pretty much like inertia, okay? So if you have an aluminum drive shaft, it's, it weighs less. So it uses less energy to rotate it than a steel one, which is heavier, and it takes more energy to rotate it and to keep it in place. So you, uh, with an aluminum drive shaft, you could expect less vibration at high speeds. You can expect quicker acceleration, and you can expect better gas mileage too and better transfer of power from the engine to the rear wheels when you're looking for an aluminum drive shaft in the junkyard now there's two options uh, one of them I suggest and one of them I don't suggest but both of them will work um, the Ford Aerostar okay uh, that's the vans that you've seen back in the days uh, I think they started in like 87 or something like that I'll post the actual dates that have the aluminum drive shafts in them at the bottom of the screen here but um, those drive shafts uh, actually bolt right in, but the problem with them is is that they weren't designed to take the power of a V8. So it can handle like a stock V8, and that's iffy at best. I would say a stock automatic V8, um, because I had a buddy who had an Aerostar aluminum drive shaft in his stick shift 5.0 with bolt-ons, and he, he and he damaged it. He destroyed. It. It broke in half and it whipped up and hit the floor and it could have hurt him really badly. So I don't suggest using that, but that is um, a swap that is direct, okay? So you can maybe use it as a guide as to how long you want to cut an aluminum drive shaft or whatnot, or use a, the yoke or U-joints, whatever, okay? Now, the next place, and this is where I do suggest because it's thicker and stronger, is the Crown Vic. Now the Crown Vic have aluminum dry shafts and the good thing about them is they very rarely get damaged in the junkyard why crown victorias especially the police interceptors were designed to where the dry shaft is up inside of the uh the tunnel the little trans tunnel so when the forklift comes to pick it up in the yard it doesn't damage it so you can get a really good aluminum dry shaft out of a crown vic in the yard and not have much problems at all with it okay so we have two crown vics here we have this one, which is older, and then we have this one here. So, when you're looking for the Crown Vicks, you're not going to get it from this one here. This one has a steel, uh, still has a steel drive shaft. That's not what you want. So, this is the newer style. This is the one that most of the police interceptors uh, were. You definitely, if you can, get a police interceptor um, drive shaft from an old police car in the junkyard. If not, this one will do just fine as well. So it's very, very simple. All right, so when you talk about a drive shaft, we're talking about this part right here. It's a very light color when it is aluminum. When it's steel, you'll notice that it's kind of orange and rusted, and it's very heavy. Reason why I like to go for the Crown Vicks uh, with this is because this is the most that happens to them in the yard. A little scratch here and there because it sits, as you can see, recessed under the floor. So when the forklift comes to pick it up, it doesn't get damaged, all right? So the benefit to these, like I said, is less inertia uh, from takeoff. You get better and smoother acceleration and a smoother ride at high speeds on the freeway. All right, so the car feels more stable, all right? So, very, very simple to remove. Four 12 point 12 millimeter bolts. So it's one, two, three, and there's one up top here. Four. All right. You remove those four bolts, and literally it'll drop down and just slide it out. 
Now, be careful when you're taking it out to not hit yourself in the face. Uh, and also that uh, some fluid sometimes comes out of the rear of the transmission depending on what angle the car is on. So just be careful of that so you don't get it all over you. But it's real easy. It's a real easy uh, uh, thing to take out. So here's the thing. If you put it in neutral, it's going to want to spin, right? This one's not in neutral uh, because I couldn't get the gear to engage uh, or the gear to the shifter to move. So you're going to use a pry bar or a screwdriver if you do get it in neutral. And the reason why I like to get it in neutral is so that I can rotate and access the bolts um, as I, you know, rotate it around. So what I'll do is I'll take the screwdriver here and I'll jam it in here like that. Okay. And then when I rotate it, it'll hit, it'll hit the floor. All right. And that's one way of doing it. If you have a helper, you could always just have him press down on the parking brake and then rotate and uh, take a bolt loose and then have him release the parking brake and then rotate and repeat the process until you get all the bolts. So yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. Take the breaker bar, because these are in a pretty tight. <clears throat> and you just loose it. Well, I'm gonna loosen all of them at once if I can. So we got them all loose. And now I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> See, there it is. And when you're gonna take out the last one, make sure that you're holding it up so it doesn't fall on your face. Obviously, this would be a lot harder without this tool, but the reason why I got it in there and that's it as simple as simple as that all right so now we got it hanging down and it's very simple just slide it on out boom and there it is now uh, a lot of people will say hey you know you could take the yoke with you um this you know this yoke does not work with t5s or alds it's too thick okay um, it was built for heavier duty because the vehicles, the Crown Vicks are much heavier cars. So this yoke will not work. It's too thick. So you have to remove it or uh, you have to pay for it at the window. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take this off and I'll show you guys how to do that in a sec. And then uh, take our drive shaft. Uh, okay. And there it is. Now what's great about this drive shaft for our swap is that it's extra long. It's longer because the Crown Vic is a longer car, so it's extra long. And uh, that means that you could always cut it shorter, okay? This dry shaft is good in a lot of vehicles because like I said, it's really long. So you can use it for multiple vehicles. So let's go ahead and pull this yoke off. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna go on ahead and uh, take a needle nose pliers and pinch these and pull out these clips. There's one on this side and then there's one on this side. Let's go ahead and knock that out. She got a good pair of needle nose. And there it is, it's out. All right, that's how you get him out. So next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna knock out, uh, take these and bang it to one side and then pull the cap off. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So what I like to do is to remove this yoke, let's take a big socket, put it underneath on one side. And then I take a uh, 11 16 socket, boom, with this mallet. All right, start seeing it come out on the other side here like that. You're gonna keep on hitting until it comes all the way out. Okay, see, it's loose on one side, and now that cap is out. So what you're gonna do, you take a pair of vice grips, and you're gonna grip them and twist them out. Okay, that U-joint was toe up, rusted, okay, and it just removes like that, because you get one side off, okay? Like I said, this yoke is too thick to use with our AODs or T5s. It would be nice, because it's heavier duty, but the outside diameter is too much. So, that goes through the strap, and we pack up the tools, and we take the bounty. This is the bounty. All right. Aluminum drive shaft acquired. 
But it's all good. Junkyard Dogan! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>so what i did was i the, the suspension has to be compressed on the car in order to get the measurement for the dry shaft because if it's not you'll get an incorrect pinion angle so i put the car on cinder block so i can still get underneath and measure it safely all right so uh, let's get up under there and knock that out okay so here's the uh the back of the trans and what we're measuring basically is from the face of this trans here to the face of the uh, pinion flange on the back. And then we're gonna measure uh, from the face here to the tip of this. So we're gonna see that measurement as well, okay? Also, as you can see right here, I'm gonna go to the back and show you guys. Yeah, it's a little dark under here. That's the pinion flange. So we're gonna measure to the face of this right here, all right? Now, usually you'd have to measure the diameter here as well, but um, I got them as a pair from the same car, so I don't have to do that measurement. So um, this, this is actually from the interceptor as well, from the police interceptor, it's got the bigger flange. So uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and measure that. So basically you take, it's a regular tape measure and you run it from here all the way up to the face of the back of the trans. Alrighty, so. I am about to head over to um, Dry Shaft Pro over here in Gardena. And I'm bringing the Police Interceptor Drive Shaft and I'm bringing the Camaro Drive Shaft. So we're going to remove the yoke from the Camaro Drive Shaft and then have the uh, Police Interceptor Drive Shaft shortened and uh, balanced and then put the yoke on that. Maybe add some new U-joints, and boom, we're in the game, all right? So let's head over there right now and see what's up. So we just arrived here at Dry Shaft Pro. So I am grabbing the police inter grabbing the police. I'm grabbing the police interceptor dry shaft. About to bring it in here. All right. This one. Let's go get the Camaro one. So all you gotta do at this point here is give them the measurements and they do the rest. What's up, man? What up, Junkyard? <laughs> How you doing, brother? All right. <laughs> so, yo, we in the house with my man Sergio right here. See what up? Hold on, brothers. Yeah. Doing, man? Yeah, man, we out here. So, check it out. Um, so, the deal is, is that we have um, the Chevy dry shaft that we have here. Unfortunately, I cannot use this um, yoke because it will affect the integrity of the dry shaft. So I thought I was gonna get away with something, but I am not, <laughs> not this time at least. So check it out. Yeah. All right. So this is the yoke from the six speed from the Chevy. I thought I was gonna be able to use, but the problem is, is that the, the width here is different than the width uh, on this dry shaft. So, uh, it will kind of affect it in a negative way, and since we're twin supercharging, I don't really want to take that chance. So yeah, man. Uh, but my man said we can at least cut, cut it, and uh, balance it, and get another yoke and some U joints, and we'll be good to go. All right. So we'll be back in a few days. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're back at Dry Shaft Pro, and we are about to pick up the Project Mayhem uh, Junkyard Aluminum Drive Shaft from the Police Interceptor. So we just made it, they're about to close in like five minutes, you know what I mean? So let's check it out, all right? So there it is. We got the, look at that heavy duty yoke, all right? Look at the new U-joints in there, you see that? Ooh. Yeah, got 
Got it all set up. Boom, we got a new U joint back there. Ain't gonna break on us. All right. All thanks to the Los Angeles Police Department. <laughs> thank you for scrapping your drive shaft. I'd like to thank Sergio, man. I really appreciate you, Doc. All right, thanks, man. No problem. If you guys need anything, make sure you come to Dry Shaft Pro. All right? I'm telling you, these guys will take care of you, man. They do it to me every time. All right, so I am shipping out now with the Dry Shaft, feeling like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Here goes Serge in the back. <laughs> All right, Doc. So, yeah, man, I'm excited. I got my Dry Shaft finally. Um, so, yo, so total with the yoke and the new U joints. Uh, take home, I spent uh, 270, 270 bucks. That's with the yoke and the joints, the U joints. All right, I bought the dry shaft for twenty dollars from the junkyard, and uh, yeah, this is what I came out with. So yeah, let's head on back to the shop, to the doghouse. Stick this in the car. All right, I'm excited. Man. Today is a good day. So there you have it. The uh, police interceptor dry shaft, aluminum dry shaft is installed. And uh, yeah, man, it cost me a grand total of $280. And uh, that's from beginning to end, to end with the U-joints uh, and the yoke. All right. So make sure you go to Dry Shaft Pro uh, when it's time to uh, to lock down a dry shaft. They do an excellent job, and I've never had a problem with them. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, dry shaft junkyard mod video. So if you're the kind of guy that this is the life that you lead, like me, I go to the junkyard, find stuff for my car all the time. That's what I do. Make sure you represent, man. Represent who you are. All right. So when I say that, I mean check it out. I got some more hats. So we got round three of the JYD caps. So I'm gonna start with these uh, two right here. This is the, uh, I would guess you say alligator skin bill, uh, junkyard dog cap. Uh, this is a hip hop style cap, um, like the other, uh, like round two was a hip hop style cap. This is a cork bill JYD cap with the jean print uh, uh, topper, another hip hop style cap. And now, I've also decided to add to the line some of these, um, I would call them hard worker caps. You know what I'm saying? The hip hop caps are more for like styling. You can wear them with stuff. Like, you know, they, they look fresh. For the guys out there who are like real workers and, and, and plan on sweating and, and messing their hats up, um, I got the uh, black faded workers hat, as I like to call them. So you put them on a real, you know, fit like that kind of more smooth, you know? And they're a lot more comfortable than the hip hop hats. Hip hop hats, like I said, are for like, they're for, you know, for styling, but they're not gonna wear a tuxedo every day. You understand what I'm saying? So it's kind of like that. So I got the blue and the uh, and the gray, JYD cap, bam, all right? I like this one a lot. This is the blue, light gray. All right, it's a little bit, you know? And then, last but not least, the OG, Junkyard Dogs cap. Orange and blue. That's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get something that's a little bit more comfortable. Um, they got straps at the back. This is something, like I said, that you can go to a junkyard, rock all day. If it gets dirty, throw it in the washing machine. Who cares? You know what I mean? So, all right. So if you're interested, make sure that you go to junkyarddogs.com. Don't forget, the site is set up to help you guys turn parts into cash. So, hey, if you wanna make some extra money, go ahead and post your parts, or you can go ahead and cop and cap, support the cause, all right? So until next time, man, we out here, Junkyard Dogging, woo!